How you doing? Everybody, do do me a favor. Just stand up for a second. Everybody stand up. Come on, including you, Lurdine. Come on. Everybody stand up. Shake it out. A little shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Shake it out. Move your body. A little jumping jack. Something. Just to get some energy going, right? Get some energy. I'm super jet lagged, so I'm getting some energy also. All right, fantastic. All right, sit back down. Let's get moving. Let's go straight back into the content. We've got uh, two of the most amazing practitioners of social media, uh, trainers and practitioners of social media to be able to share with you. Um, to start, I'm going to introduce you to the host of this next se session. He's going to take you all the way until we get to um, Eric Thomas at 2 o'clock Eastern. Um, Fraser Brooks is a dear friend, a great uh, ambassador to this profession. Fraser, are you there? We got I both. am, I am, I am. What's How up? You What's How up? You Jesse Lee, Jesse Lee is, <laughs> is uh, in, in the midst of a, her own 90 day run. So uh, yeah. uh, the time is valuable. We, you know, we're stealing time from her run, which is great. Um, I don't mind stealing uh, or borrowing, borrowing. We're borrowing. We're investing. We're investing. Um, yeah. Uh, you got good Jet light in, in your little cubby hole there that you have in your house. Uh, this time, at least somebody's not clean, you know, uh, cleaning the bedroom behind you. What's it was that? hilarious the last time. <laughs> <laughs> like... <laughs> anyway. I need a so, run that changes uh, you. It changes you as a human. Yeah. Real life. Uh, all right. So you two, I'll let you guys take it from here. Um, thank you for your contribution. These people are geeked up and ready to learn and crush this thing called social media. Um, take it away. Well, uh, hey, everyone. Jesse Lee, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> well, I'm great, Fraser. How are you? How's Dubai? I feel like I must come visit you pretty soon. It will make for really good social Please media come. content. It's so amazing. Really Erica Marina and the gang are over, and it's super, super fun. So, uh, guys, I will, I'm will. i going to share a story with you real quick, just so you can kind of absorb the information that you've had. Ivan and, uh, and Stefania are super, super amazing. I was taking loads of notes as well, always a note taker. Um, but I'll tell you this, social media completely changed my life. I was, if you'd met me 12, 13 years ago, like I might have, I might as well just walked around the city around Liverpool, just with a massive L on my head. Cause I was the world's biggest loser. Like there was honestly not one person was a bigger loser than me. And I remember joining the network marketing profession after seeing my parents build their business all on social media, all you know, offline, running newspaper advertisements, putting little postcards in the doors of, you know, in between the little rubber bit and the window of cars, dropping leaflets through letterboxes. They did all of this fun stuff. And I joined because I thought I could do it all on social media. It was a way for me to be super introverted at home. You won't believe it, but both Jesse Lee and I and Eric are all introverts. It's kind of crazy when you think about it, but it's true. And I'm typing away, typing away, typing away. And I'm connecting with people, right? Eric says that all business is conversations. I was taught the same sort of thing. So I'm, I'm typing away, I'm typing away, and I'm connecting with some different people. And then, bang, I found someone using what I teach now on Skype. Let me know in the chat, guys, if you uh, if you've ever rem if you remember Skype or you used to use it, uh, you know, you used to use it for phone calls to your family. I see you guys, awesome. I'm seeing I'm seeing uh, some of you guys here. By the way, I can see uh, Asunti Dinardi. Uh, I hope I'm saying that right. Linda Lappin, I see you. Melissa Williams, hey hey hey. Renata ja ja oh, I've chosen a hard one. Renata Yankowskian. Oh, I think I got it wrong. I'm sorry. And Adrian Fries, I said fries. It's got to be fries, like French fries, right? Yeah, awesome. So I, I come across this Russian entrepreneur. He owned a restaurant. And I remember about I was about to press send. I was about to click the mouse to press my message, like to connect with this Russian guy. And I hesitated because I just thought that all Russians would just be like Egan, Ivan Dragov off uh, Rocky Four, and they would just like murder me. Right, I just thought like I can't send the message. What happens if he like finds my IP address because he doesn't like the message? He comes around to the house and just crushes me. So I was like, ah, I just didn't message him. The next day, I had the courage. I was like, no, no, I'm gonna message him. 
bang, hit message. And I honestly didn't sleep for three days, just petrified about if he'd seen the message, he'd not seen the message. Was he going to come round to the house? Was I going to get murdered? Was he going to put a grenade in a letterbox? Like, I don't know how you put a grenade in a letterbox, but you get my point, right? So he writes back, nice to meet you. But it's not nice to meet you. I'm putting it in his accent. It was nice to meet you, right? That was more Borat <laughs> than, than Russian. But anyway, we connected and I invited him round to the house. He lived in Liverpool. I was living just near Liverpool at the time. It was about a 30 minute drive from where he lived. And I remember inviting him to the house because my dad said, social media will only work if you get the contacts in front of you. Now, this is in 2010, right? So the goal was to get meet online and bring them offline. So I remember calling my nan, my mum, and my dad to say, I have an appointment at 2 p.m. If you don't hear from me by 2.15, send the police round to the house because it's a Russian dude, right? I was honestly, it was, it was super crazy. The guy comes to the front gates. He rings on the buzzer to the gates. The gates to the front door is like 10 meter walk. He did not walk down that pathway. He did not walk the 10 meters. He like, I don't know if you guys call it like swag, swaggered. Like he just kind of like walked like this. Like it was like a bounce from side to side. And I could feel the ground shaking as he was walking down this 10 meter path. And I was petrified thinking, this is it. It's over. I've met someone on social media and he is going to kill me. Like, and he was huge. Tall, wide, deep, big, long ponytail. And he goes, hello, my name's Sergei. Nice to meet you. I looked at him and I just kind of went, hello. <laughs> uh, uh, do I let him in the house or not? And I let him in the house. I asked him if he wanted tea, coffee, or vodka, right? He didn't choose vodka. He went for tea. And we sat and we became brothers. Not like instantly, right? He, he, he had me at knife point. He didn't really. Um, he had me at gunpoint. Didn't really. We, we just built this friendship and relationship. And it was one day we built this relationship, this friendship. He became a raving fan of me, but I became a raving fan of him. I became a raving fan of him because he shared with me a different experiences and different lessons in life that I'd never even imagined possible. He started building a team in Russia. We went over to Russia. I really didn't want to go. And on the way back on one of our trips, we stopped off in Moscow and I was doing an event and in, in walked in this hot blonde goddess. Like I'm talking, she was just smoking hot. Like, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. And she was my interpreter. Anyway, she's asleep in the next room right now. Don't worry, I didn't kidnap her. I married her, just so we know. Like, let's just make sure that that's like totally, totally aware of that. She's in the other, I married her. Social media completely changed my life because of this one contact that I connected with. I didn't get murdered, right? I was open to the pro process of connect, creating a co connection, having conversation, being open to new experiences, and that allowed me to gain the confidence to go from a complete 100% introvert to a maybe a 20% introvert online, 80% extrovert online, right? I'm the, I'm, a, I'm the lamb at home so I can be the lion online. And if it wasn't for me to be an open to it, this would not have happened to me. And I think that everyone has that social media story. But I wanted to share that too. And by the way, I love Russians now, just for complete honesty. They're, they're some of the nicest people ever. They won't all murder you. They are just so, so nice. Super, super great people. But I just want, I just wanted that to share with that because I, I know we wanted to, uh, I know we wanted to kind of, uh, you know, just absorb what you've already learned. And, and I, I want to ask Jesse Lee the same thing. Jesse Lee is, I think, possibly the best role model for social media. If you're looking for someone who, who is just so dialed in on who she wants in her team and what she stands for. So, uh, Jesse Lee, what is, what would you, what's, what, what would you say? How has social media impacted your life and your business so far before we kind of get into the practical stuff? I mean, similar story, you know, I invited over an Italian, uh, from Instagram and 
Um, we, he was my translator and uh, happily ever after he's sleeping in the next room, actually. Um, his name is to be determined. Uh, damn, what the hell? I mean, I am motivated more than ever to post. Um, I am not. I am single as a Pringle. I'm just waiting for uh, wait, waiting for the world to open back up. I'm starting to feel some hope happening now, ladies and gentlemen. Wow. Um, I love that story, but I feel like you're really funny today, even more than normal. So, um, okay. So, so first of all, I, I'm the same way, like Fraser said, I'm introverted. Fraser's introverted. Eric's introverted. And I started getting frustrated. Um, Yvonne kind of nailed it this morning when he said, or this afternoon or whatever, this evening, if you're in Dubai with Fraser, when he said that, uh, you know, nose are more painful when they're in person. And being somebody who was, I built my business belly to belly for four and a half years first in a direct sales company. It, I don't think you ever get used to those nose in person. Like every time it was like a stab at my soul. Like I, I remember my uplines would say like, oh, they're not saying no to you. They're saying no to the opportunity and the no's turn into yeses. And I, well, I don't know, but I was taking it personally every single time. So if you can relate to that, um, you can throw a yes in the chat. I can see your chats too. So, hey, what's going on, Kathleen and Amelia and Christy and, and Christine and Rashid, Rashad and, and Danny and all of you guys. So, um, so good seeing you guys on here. I love that we're this far into the run and you guys are still participating as well. Uh, but, you know, those no's never got easier for me. And I will promise you, I... I made a decision on December 1st, 2015 to do a 30 day video challenge. Now, hold on a second, because live video did not exist in December of 2015. Some of you might know that. And I thought to myself, okay, I'll do 30 days. I'll give a business tip because at that point I've been doing business for maybe six years or something like, or I guess five years, almost six years. And I would record a five minute video. I would just upload it on Facebook back to what Stefania was saying. I didn't have Instagram really. I didn't, I, there certainly was not TikTok. I wasn't on Musical.ly. I didn't have a YouTube channel. I was just using Facebook and I uploaded this video every day, like, you know, a three minute video, five minute video, two minute video, whatever. And then I remember one day I took my phone and I'm looking and there's this little, well, now it's red, I guess this little thing that says live. But it was green. And I'm like, what's that? What is that? And I clicked it. Now, don't be stupid like Jesse Lee. And <laughs> wow, all of a sudden, wow, all of a sudden I'm live. You know, it's a live channel all of a sudden. And all it's starting to say all these people who I've really never seen since high school because my Facebook at that time was all people I went to high school with family members and college graduate people. Like that was it. It wasn't a big Facebook page. Okay. I love, I, I see them start to come in. It's like, here's Judy Honeywell. Here's Danny Carroll. Here's Robin Brody. I'm like, Oh God, what is happening? Get me off this thing. So I don't know if you can relate to that, but I, but I, in my process of wanting to barf everywhere, um, I started realizing people were interacting. And I thought, okay, so maybe I'll make the pivot then to doing this live for the rest of 30 days. So it turned into this 30 day live challenge. And then I started feeling some type of way. And I don't know if any of you have felt like this on social media where you're still trying to get your, you're still trying to get your grips, you know, you're following the coaching you're getting, you're doing the reels, you're doing the TikToks, you're making the posts. By the way, we're definitely gonna talk about TikTok today because I know the last time Fraser and I went 16 hours together, somehow we managed to just kind of tap on TikTok. So I promise we'll TikTok with you guys. Um, I know you want that. And I got really frustrated because it was a ghost town. And I don't know if any of you can relate to that, but it felt like as loud as those no's felt in person to me. And so I got really disenfranchised and I decided to take a walk to the grocery store, which was only about a half hour. So I start huffing and puffing my way to the grocery store, <clears throat> you know, probably walking like, like Serge was walking, you know, I'm kidding. I don't walk like that, but I get to the grocery store and I'm, I'm in my feelings, probably headed straight for the cookie aisle. And this lady is staring at me. Okay. You know, that look that somebody gives you when they, they recognize you, you know what I'm talking about? And she's looking at me like, <laughs> I'm like this 
person either has like something in their eye or I look like someone that they know, but like they definitely don't know me because nobody comments on anything of mine. Um, and she goes, hey, are you Boss Lee? And I said, yeah. And she says, I love your live videos. Oh my God. Meanwhile, I'm over here about to have a pity party, you know, with the bakery section. And she's like, she's like, I love your live videos. I said, I'm sorry, what is, what is your name? And she said, oh, <laughs> you know, my name, whatever. And I said, I, I'm really sorry. I don't, I don't recognize your name. I don't think I've ever seen a comment of yours. I don't think I've ever seen your name pop up on a live. She goes, oh, no, 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 no. We aren't even Facebook friends, okay? I don't want everybody to know <laughs> that I watch you, but I watch all your videos. They're very inspirational. They're teaching me how to build business. Uh, I just really appreciate them. You're very funny and smart. And I'm like, you've never clicked like on anything, and yet you feel this way about me? And it was just that little boost I needed to continue. And I only say that to all of you because now I don't know what a million followers across platforms. The podcast is at like 6 million downloads or something now, which is cuckoo. Um, I appreciate all of you guys, by the way, who listen to any of it or follow any of it. Uh, millions and millions of dollars of, of, you know, product sold, obviously, you know, the recruiting is not the sale. I mean, all of it's crazy. And I almost quit. And mm -hmm. I, I just want to say that to you because I know some of you, you're on here today and it's kind of like, all right, I'll give it one last shot. But I want to tell you that just because you hear crickets does not mean that nobody is listening. Okay. Just because you hear crickets does not mean that nobody is listening. It doesn't mean that nobody is watching. It doesn't mean anything just because your views might drop on Facebook. Like I remember when I used to go, it was like every live video I did had <clears throat> 500 live viewers or something and would end with, you know, 20,000 views, 12 to 20,000 views. And then Facebook changed the way that they counted viewers. And it plummeted. And I remember, I mean, Fraser had a conversation about this years ago. I'm like, no one's watching. He's like, no, they just changed it from instead of three seconds counting as a watch. Now it's whatever it was. I'm like, I, I mean, you guys are judging yourself based off of what I like to call vanity metrics. And my business, because I've consistently showed up and not allowed how many likes something gets or how many views something gets or how many shares something gets affect and dictate the way that I feel about myself and my content is how I've attracted the amount of people that I've attracted is how I have been able to continue to build the way that I've built and is why my business is hugely international, extremely successful. And I don't say this to sound any type of way to any of you, but I've had 11 years of business now as of January 7th, and it's been year over year, over year, over year, over year growth, growth. It's never gone backwards. And you can too, but you have to stop thinking that you're not good enough and you have to stop comparing yourself to what, to Stefan. I've never had reels go viral like Stefania's, just so you guys know. I've, I, I mean, I have supercars, but no one bought, where is my European husband who buys me a Ferrari? I mean, we are really missing out over here in Texas. I am really concerned right now. Um, but anyway, whenever he, wherever you are, wherever you are, I am here for the supercars. Um, but no, in, in all seriousness, don't, don't judge yourself based off of any of that because your people are finding you the more consistently you post and even if it's one viewer per video you know that but it's the same person you know it could be your your serge like fraser said it could be your mm -hmm. jesse lee it could be your Mr. brooks it could be you know your superstar who just watches everything you do it becomes evangelical about you shares you to the world and next thing you know boom um and so mm -hmm. my life has totally changed social media. It's allowed me to find out who I am. It's allowed me to lead in a totally different capacity. It's given me new challenges. It's mm -hmm. also given me so much more perspective on the world. So, yeah. I love it. No, <laughs> I, I, I love it. And it's, uh, you know, I, 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 had a, I had a a realization probably about three, maybe four years ago that I stopped caring about the number of followers that I had. And I started caring about the number of people who would defend me if the hater was there or people who would tell other people about me, because I think on social media, we're so obsessed with getting friend requests. We're so obsessed with getting followers, but in reality, followers will just follow you. And if you put content out, they'll support. If you don't put content out, they don't. But a raving fan or a true fan, what they'll do is they'll be out there whilst Jesse Lee is on here. 
they'll be telling their friends, hey, do you listen to do you listen to the People's Mentor with Jesse Lee Ward? Like Raven fans are building your brand and generating you leads, whether you're creating content or not. And this is the thing: you could have a thousand followers and a hundred raving fans. That thousand followers is going to grow and grow and grow like crazy. So I just want you guys to know: don't just because we have like you know, I I don't have that many compared to Jesse Lee and Stefania and Ivan and Eric. But I don't want you to worry about that. I don't want you to think and obsess about how am I going to get a million followers? How am I going to get 500,000 followers? How am I going to get 100,000 followers? Focus more on how you're going to serve the people you want to serve. This is where it comes to mission. Um, I remember someone saying, yeah, but there's no I in team, but there's two in commission or there's two in the mission. So focus on the mission that you're on. So Jesse Lee, I have some questions for you. Um, just like maybe some quite simple questions and you can answer them in a short, a short answer or, or, or a longer answer. It's completely up to you, but I think this could help people. What's your favorite platform when it comes to Facebook or Inst like, let's go with Facebook and Instagram. What's your favorite, like, what do you prefer using the most? <laughs> short answer, uh, by far Instagram. And I know they're owned by the same person, but Facebook can suck right. an egg. I'm over it. <laughs> I feel like you know, right now you're watching this current credibility. You know, I love, I love that Facebook dropped 26%. Screw you. They've got me account restricted for calling somebody at, for saying Tahoe. I said Tahoe. And they said, oh, she's a bully. She's a bully. She said Tahoe. What? You so bully insane. calling people Tahoes. Yeah. Um, so I also what really do you like, get the I most? I really enjoy real. So. So you, do you, and, and would you say that you get the best result, better results on Instagram versus Facebook? Yeah, by far. Um, I actually, I mean, we can get into a conversation about this. I think that, especially if you're somebody who feels like you're a little diverse and you keep hearing about niche marketing, I'm a different mm -hmm. person on all my platforms. And so I hope that gives some of you some wisdom around how to post. So on Instagram mm -hmm. <clears throat> in particular, I know my reels hit a lot because they are all business focused. So it's a very specific niche, but it can also have business with comedy inside of it. Right. So my, mm -hmm. my Instagram is a lot more, you know, kind of almost your coach, Jesse Lee, but then there's also lifestyle. Like I really only show my cars uh, on Instagram, which I realized, and I should start putting them on TikTok because I know they'll, they'll go viral on TikTok. Um, my Facebook is a lot more of my niche, which is, Hey, here's my God kids. Here's a lot more of my heart. These really, really long captions. Um, here is, you know, obviously my live video is saved on Facebook. So people are getting a very different side of me on Facebook. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, just a lot more family kind of stuff because Facebook really now, mm -hmm. and I hate to say this, but it's really true. Facebook is just a different generation. So if you go talk to yeah. something I like to say that that will help some of you, maybe go pay attention and ask your kids. How many of you are parents? Any parents on here? Let me see if there's any parents on here. And my doggies. Yes, that's true, Danny. Okay, so there's a lot of parents. Marita, Abby, Laura, Becky, Brittany, Cheryl, Hawa. Okay, there's a lot of you that are parents on here. Go ask your kids what apps they're using. They're not going to say Facebook. If you tell them to download a Facebook so that you can keep in touch with them or something, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. Now, that's not to say you shouldn't pay attention to the demographic that's older that's on Facebook, because quite frankly, um, I think pulling money out of 18 year olds is a little bit more difficult than um, asking a 45 to 80 year old, you know, for $100. <laughs> uh, so keep that in mind. There's definitely a place for Facebook. I just have a different per I just have a I show a different side of Jesse Lee on Facebook. Um, but conversion wise, mm -hmm. money wise, sales wise, um, attention wise, it is definitely Instagram. Um, who, who on here is in Europe? Any Europeans watching? Because um, I'm about to say something that um, I actually currently don't have either because my phone thinks I'm European. Slovakia, Romania. Yes, 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 yes. Rita, uh, Leaf, of course, Norway. It's a very Norwegian Norway. name. Yes. Uh, Frederick, Amelia. That, that, I think we've got a Viking on here. Um, that's a very Viking name. Um, anyway, uh, Romania, Germany. Okay, Bulgaria. I love it. So all of you that are European, this may not yet pertain to you, but I want you as an assignment to start checking on this and seeing when it does. Facebook reels can explode your yeah. business. 
Okay. We have had several people in our organization, and I'm not exaggerating with this number, with well over 200 new customers a month right now, almost solely off of Facebook Reels. Now, I do not have Facebook Reels yet. I don't think that Asia has Facebook Reels yet. I do not believe that Europe has Facebook Reels yet, but it mm -hmm. is coming. It is coming. You can sell a ton on Instagram Reels right now. You can recruit a ton on Instagram Reels. You can sell and recruit a ton on, excuse me, on TikTok. And for those of you who are American, if you're American, can you put American in the, uh, in the chat? You're Australian, maybe not yet either. North America right now does have Facebook mm -hmm. Reels at, at for the most part. So if you are not at least repurposing, write that down. You can Google how to do it. If you are not at least repurposing your content off of TikTok and or Instagram Reels and putting them onto Facebook Reels and YouTube Shorts, like Yvonne Tapia mentioned, you are missing out on a lot, a whole lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> I you know, it's funny story. actually because... Yeah, no, it's all good. It's, it's great. Um, here's a question that I would ask yourself. If someone was to binge watch or consume your content and then they were asked after watching 10, 20, 30, 40 pieces of content, what does this person do? Would you be, would you be able to answer the question yes or no? Like I know if I go onto TikTok on Jessie Lee, I'll, I'll be able to tell you she's involved in network marketing. And I could probably tell you the sector of the company that she's with, right? Same on Instagram. Same on Facebook, but not as not as obviously. But it has to be. People will follow you when they know what they, when they know what they're going to get from you. So with this, like when you're on Instagram and you're making a post about fashion, food, travel, your dogs, sports, Italy, another Italy, like it's too. I don't know what I'm going to get. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to get from this person. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm confused. People need to know what they're going to get from you because here's the thing: we we post to make ourselves look good, but we need to make we need to post to make other people go. What am I going to get from this person if I follow them? Um, here's one for you. Let's say we've got a lot of Europeans and and people Spanish speaking, French speaking, German speaking. Let's say you are French, living in France. What language would you recommend that that person posts their content? This might be an interesting answer. I don't know if I'm going to blow people's minds. Uh, it's going to first of all depend on platform, to be totally honest, if, if, you're, if I'm the one coaching you. Uh, but I will promise you the answer if I am in France trying to recruit French people. And regardless, okay, honestly, you have to have your social media in French. Okay, it, because here's how any of these platforms work. This is how they work. They show you first, regardless of trend and regardless of language, whatever, they show you to who is there in your area who speaks your language that has the same trending whatever as you. That's how the algorithms work. Then if it hits in French, it will go out into the other European countries if you live in France. Then if it hits in all of Europe, it will go over to America, over to Australia, over to whatever. Okay. That's how it works. That's why a lot of the people that I follow on TikTok, I thought there's a lot of Germans that I follow. Now I have a very large German business as well, but these people, it's, I, it's, I'm, I love that you're bringing this up because I had this conversation with one of our biggest German leaders and he said, well, I don't know. Like I want to get into American TikTok. I said, of course you do. Let me show you how much Europe is in mind because of the hashtags I use, because of the way I post, because of what I talk about. And I'll get into this in a second. And I literally, when I'm coaching him, I open my TikTok to show him how European my TikTok is. And the men are speaking German in this video, but it was very funny that as soon as I opened TikTok, the very first video that opened when I was in the process of coaching a German man was a German man. <laughs> He's like, wait, what? I said, because his content is really good in German. And it makes sense in English based off of his body language, the trends he's following, etc. Now you can do something if you are fluent in English or a secondary language it doesn't have to be English. I actually tend to coach people to have two, like two TikToks or two Instagrams. The only other thing that I ever see work is if you are speaking in your native language and then your captions can be written in, let's call it French again, French and English. 
-hmm. That's the only thing I see work. Um, but the way everything works is it pushes mm -hmm. out based off of that. Um, and then I'll give you the hashtag trick really fast. This is how I get into a lot of European, uh, in particular, TikTok. Um, I'm just on a European mission, I feel like. Da, 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 da. Uh, the <laughs> understand, and this is interesting for, um, I would say this is probably interesting for those of you who are American and don't know any better. And this might shock some of the Europeans on here, but just bear with me for a second. Uh, we can do it in the chat, actually. Okay, so if you are, uh, let's call it Italian, what do you call Italy? Like, what is your country called? I'm sorry that Italy was the first one that came to my mind. I don't know why they make them the way they make them Italy. Okay, like, Italia. Lord mercy. Italia. Italia. Ah, right. Okay, if you are American, what do you call Italy? Italy with a Y. Right. Okay. Let's do another country. If you are um, German, you live in Germany. What is your country called? Let's put it in the chat. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay. Right. Okay. If you're American, what do you call Germany? Mm, yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, if you're European, what do you call Europe? I guess this one kind of depends on country, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah look at this. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hmm. Okay. If you're American, what do you call Europe? Hmm. Different. Oh, look at the chat. So when I'm hashtagging and I want to get into these other countries, I am using hashtags where I am hashtagging in the native country's system of speaking. Mm -hmm. And some of you are just doing our normal American ignorance <laughs> mm -hmm. and wondering why you can't find people that are from other countries. Um, so that's like a little, a little, um, I know that was a bit of an expansion on what you asked, but uh, how about you? What would you suggest? No, I, and touching on that as well, do the same with the geotags. Even if you're taking a photo in New York City, just tag it as Munich in Germany. Pick a city in Germany, like usually the capitals or second or third capital, and just bang. Well, in New York City, it's it doesn't matter. It just it doesn't matter. Just keep, if you if you tag it long enough, guess what? People are going to start seeing that content in those uh, in those markets. But no, I'm I'm the same. You, you and me are aligned. We we know that. So yeah, I'm I'm the exact same. And I think if you are in Germany, let's talk about this this German guy, um, German leader. Shout out to them. So this German leader living in Germany, doing content in Germany. There are Germans living in the U.S. Like they can go connect with Germans in the U.S. and then they're going to have a neighbor who's American who. And it just it just grows that way, um, which is super cool. Um, two quick questions, and then we want to get in, or maybe three quick questions. How how can how long do you feel you you were consistent for on social media until you started to get those months where you recruit were recruiting like big not because you recruit silly numbers of people. Uh, and you get silly numbers of customers. But everyone just seems like, oh, Jessica Lee's always just got like 300 customers a week on her social media. And like, she's always gets like 47,000 Facebook views on her, on her lives. And like, they've all, people know you now, but how long would you say it took? <sighs> Guys. Okay. So <clears throat> I, <laughs> here's the thing. It's still the game. Like I'm still in the game. I'm still like you guys. Okay. I don't, I don't coach, you know, yet or any of this stuff. Right. So I'm still in the game. One of, uh, one of our biggest leaders, her name is Megan George. Uh, she's, I'm obsessed with her. She calls social media a pinata, especially when it comes to TikTok. And she's like, you just never know what's going to hit. You know, a pinata, the thing that hangs in the sky. And then it's at a birthday party and there, you know, you take the, you take the whatever and you hit it and you hit it. <laughs> And you hit it and you hit it and like you're just doing it over and over again and then finally one day it's like right and it explodes that's going viral okay it's just a pinata man you just don't know um so i didn't i did not expect a tiktok to go viral la uh, last october you know now like you know whatever that is uh 13 14 months ago 15 months ago and 
that month, I think I recruited like 600 people. I'm like, Eric, what the hell? Um, and you know, I haven't recruited 600 people a month since then. I recruit a lot a month, yes. But this is not an exaggeration what I'm about to say to you. I went live over 700 days in a row starting in December 2015, like I told you. And I have been live almost every single day ever since. Okay, 90 day run. I am basically living on live video. I checked my phone. I am averaging eight and a half hours of live video a day on four platforms. Okay, plus the podcast is up by six in the morning. Plus, I mean, it's <laughs> I was like, why am I so sleepy? <laughs> Let me tell you why I'm so sleepy, man. Ah! Uh, there's not blue light blockers in the world strong enough to help me right now. And I got 60 days to go. Help! Help! Um, but you know, I, I also think the honest answer is you guys are not normal. Okay. You're here on the accelerator because you know, you're not normal and you want way more out of your life. And so as much as I can say, Oh, you know, Fraser, great question. You know, I, I feel like, I feel mm. like I've, I've made it. Don't like my, mm. my level of hunger has not gone down last night. Who was it? Someone was talking to me. I was to find him. I don't remember. I've been watching all morning, right? My, it's not about who's posting the perfect reel. Okay, like Fraser, I steal your reels all the time. I mean, I, when I was going to get into Facebook reels, I'm like, what is Fraser doing? Oh, that's funny. It's Fraser, best friend. I'm stealing. Um, Y'all got to make sure you follow Fraser everywhere and then steal his reels and whatever. He's so funny. Um, last night, I, I was like, I'm so tired. I just don't even want to post a reel. And then I, mm. and I went on there and... It, the, I don't even have eyelashes on in the video, right? And it's me. Um, to, uh, it's that song. Um, uh, God, I'm just going to pull up the thing. I'm just going to pull up the sound really fast because it's so funny. You guys all know the song. And whilst you're doing, <laughs> and whilst you're doing that, one. like when people are asking, because people in the chat are saying like, when you, I just want. No, no, no. Sorry. No, 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 no go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. When people are saying like, how do you steal reels? Just guys, nothing's original on social media anymore. And the more original you the more original you try to be, the harder it's going to get. Because you're going to start thinking, oh, I haven't got any ideas. Like, you'll be sweating in the shower, thinking like, oh, God, like, oh, I'm already getting stretched, pulling your hair out whilst you're in the shower, thinking like, what, what do I do? What do I do? Just put your own version. Do your own version. If, even if you're you, – just because you look different, great. It's already your own version of, of the real right? Wear a different t-shirt, point in different directions, use the same text. Heck, do, do exactly. I'm giving you permission to literally copy everything that I do. And I probably can speak on behalf of Jessie Lee. She'd probably give you permission to do the same thing too, because we want you to win. Um, so yeah, it's uh, just copy it word for word well, actually, for word. Like, word. Um, we'll talk about Reels yeah. and TikTok. Um, we will get to that. But, yeah. Yeah. Like honestly, like how many of you put it in the chat, got a 1099 from your company? I mean, I'm going to guess all of you from the accelerator. Okay. <laughs> okay. So then here is your homework. Here's an assignment because this reel takes zero creativity. This was a, yo girl is half asleep and I need to post a reel because it's part of my 90 day run. We'll watch it together. Steal my reel. Watch this reel and take the exact one. I'll watch one more time. Go steal it! You all, all got your 1099, your tax form from your company. It says, when I said network marketing was just for $300 a month, and then I was going to quit, dot, 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 this 1099. Blah. <laughs> and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I wrote a funny caption. That's my personality. You can write a caption. That's your own personality, right? Like guys. <laughs> and by the way, okay. Really funny. 1099 story. <laughs> I just got to tell you, I'm a storyteller, man. I got to, I got to talk to my people in the accelerator right now. Okay. I got my tax form. I went to the mailbox, you know, like every day you go to the mailbox, you hope for like, I don't know, a gift or something, you know, I go to the mailbox, I pull it out of the mailbox, I open it up and I'm, you know, I see all the mail and I go, oh, 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 that's my 1099. Oh, oh, oh. And I literally open it up and I go, oh, <laughs> I put it back in the mailbox. 
I, cl- mm-hmm. I locked the mailbox and I texted our owner. I said, hey, thank you so much. <laughs> For last, you know, last year was a great year. Um, that is that ten ninety nine is gonna live in that box for a little bit more time because I was bleh, bleh, network marketing is bleh, the greatest of all time. Bleh. Okay, but anyway, um, steal that. Every single one of you can steal that reel, and I will tell you something that's been working really, really well for me in the last. I've probably Im- implemented this in the last week. I am a very serious business owner. First of all, okay. Second of all, I am introverted. It's not a joke. Like this is my personality. When Fraser and I went to our first dinner together, we both just like sat quietly (laughs) across from each other and ate steak. True story. Um, But I'm also funny. Like there is a part of me that is super witty, super silly, super goofy. It's true. And I realized that if I start making some reels that show my comedic side, People are, they are eating it up. And so I just want to encourage you to have a lot of fun with it. Um, Like I'll show you one more reel really fast that you again could duplicate if you want to. It is trending. And so I took it. And look, if you're not a comedian, then don't pretend to be a comedian. I'm just telling you that if you want to build your business, show all the different sides of who you are, because that's going to attract the right people to you. Um, Fraser introduced me by saying, you know, she's so good at attracting her people. So this, uh, the text on it says, I want a mentor that's present, current credibility and top in the company. Okay. Ding dong. We'll watch it one more time. Like I let it, like, I mean, it's not real. It looks real. Okay. I didn't actually fall. It was a one take yeah. real, but like the amount of business conversations I had from that, where people go, Oh my gosh. Like, I love that you are so normal and I know you're successful and you're funny enough to, and, and you let, you know, you are comfortable enough with yourself to pretend to fall over in public. And you're, why are you wearing flip flops that look like they're from Walmart, you know? And I'm like, look, they're not, I got them for free at the spa. Thank you. Um, but I guess free is cheaper than Walmart. And, uh, you know, that's Jesse Lee. Oh, you, what are, the, are those like Uggs though? Those look really nice. I like those. I get cold feet. It's- I get cold feet. Oh, well, I look, there are people that like feet and I don't have shoes on, so I'm not going to hold mine up. But um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I forget the original question, but. Um... <laughs> so, so I asked, how long, how long do you feel? <laughs> Sorry, by the way, I, 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 we're just ourselves, right? We're just, we're just, we're just oh, us. No. You like it, you love it, you don't like it, you hate it, whatever. Um, So how long, from when you got started on social media all those years ago, when did you start to feel that, oh, I'm I'm the hunted now? Like, people are hunting me. People are, like, messaging me. Like, it's just every day I'm waking up. I want your link. I want more information. I love what you do. Because for me, it was probably, like, four or five years until it was really, really, really consistent um if not like five yeah probably five years until it was like on fire yeah i'll agree i'll i'll hold strong with the five year as well um i was definitely the person that would sit in my inbox and i think this is some of you sometimes right you go to your you go to your messenger and you're sitting there and you're just refreshing you're like come on come on <laughs> you know yeah. um yeah. it takes time and and you know one thing I love about your coaching, Fraser, and that's why I always tell people to follow you. I always tell them to listen to your podcast. I always say, you know, do what Fraser Brooks is doing is some a coaching that's very consistent with you, very con- consistent with me and very consistent with Eric, who, of course, is, you know, we love Eric, obviously, is this is not get rich quick. You know, I, I've mm-hmm. never on my social media been the girl who throws out income claims if you were to message me and say, how long is it going to take me to make $10,000 in, in your business? I'm like, I literally write back. I cannot even answer that for you. I don't know how you work. Right. Um, and so, yeah, probably four or five years. And it was, it's never been as fast as it is now. And I'm forever thankful for that. The, the fact of the matter is your content is almost like casting a reel. 
like you're fishing. Mm -hmm. Different reel than uh, than an Instagram reel, right? Like every time you do it, you're just putting out different fishing reels. And if you start looking at it like that, you know, it, no, not every single one is going to hit, but anybody who's coaching you in 2022 to not build a brand or to not continue to post, um, it's not posting and, and, you know, wishing that's not what we're doing. It's intentional posting. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's intentional branding. It's intentional content and it's going to be work. You're going to be bad at this. And I, I want to just be honest, Robert and Bianca and Otilia and, and, and Miriam and, and uh, Casey, like you're not going to be good for a long time, but there are little things you can pick up from accelerators like this. I'll give you a live video on really fast that I actually, I did this in a coaching video of mine last week. Okay. So this is, so some of you found me years ago when I used to do this thing called tubby time. And, um, I'm going to explain it very quickly. <laughs> um, I've always done business lives. That's what I like to do. I like to business coach. I like to show off my brains a little bit. Okay. And I had no views and I read some article about how, um, you know, you need to do things to get people's attention. Okay. And I thought to myself, well, geez, you know, I don't do the put your butt on the internet thing like some girls do. I don't do the provocative whatever like some girls do. I don't do the, you know, whatever. It's like following those kinds of trends that were really trending back then. It was when the internet was literally like, oh, geez. Um, I mean, it kind of still is like that. But anyway, <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, how do I, how do I get attention then? And for some reason, oh, I know why. I had just landed back from Australia. So shout out from the Australians. Okay. So shout out to the Australians. I just landed from Australia. I'm exhausted. I didn't want to put makeup on and go live. And I wanted to take a bath. <laughs> and I hadn't gone <laughs> live yet. And this was during my, not my, my 700 day streak. Okay. So I said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to get in the bathtub with a face mask on, fully clothed. Asterisk, please, guys. Okay, close. Uh, there was no bubbles everywhere, like covering things. It was fully clothed in the bathtub. And I said, tubby time with Jesse Lee. And I set up my tripod. I got on Facebook and the, and I'm not telling, like, this is not an assignment to go to a tubby time. My, it's my assignment for your live videos to get more engagement for those of you that are sitting there just refreshing and wondering when something's going to hit from you. There are little tips and tricks like trending sounds, trending topics. Oh, I can give you a really good tip in a second for live video. Just remind me. Um, mm -hmm. And visual aids. So the other day on my live video, I proved a point. If we were live right now, this would work with 100% certainty. Every time I do it, it works. Okay. Now, how many of you have something in the, like put something in the chat. Do you have something around you that's kind of like bizarre? Does anyone? I, I'm a bizarre person. I have all kinds of bizarre stuff. Let's grab some stuff. Okay. So I'm like sitting here in my house and I have at least two things. I got, hold on, three things that are definitely, we're going to show you guys. Okay. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> what do you have, Fraser? What was that? Okay. Hold on. It's what a light that? bulb. Oh, I have a light bulb. Yeah, but see, people are used to your light bulb. You have to do something different, okay? Okay. Like, look at this, guys. Ready? Okay. If we were on live video and I, like, put this on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why this is here, but my viewer count would go through the roof. Okay, it would go through the roof. If I left this on, and I don't know why this lighter is here either, but if I started like lighting fires on my live video, like if I, <laughs> people will not be able to stop watching. I'm just letting you know. If I did this, this, and hold on, this broke, but I still love it. Okay, I wish this worked, but it doesn't. And I put like my mask on, everyone. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, guys, I know I'm a funny person, but it doesn't have to be like that, okay? The other day, <laughs> I love training with you because only you can pull this stuff out of me, I swear. Well, that's not really true. But the other day, I picked up a dog toy off the floor to prove it to people. I put a unicorn under my arm, and I trained with the stuffed dog unicorn under my arm, and my views went doo -doo. People kept wondering mm. what I was going to do with the unicorn. Nothing. It was just to get their attention. Okay. There are little hacks like this you can do to get more eyes on you. 
And when you have the eyes on you, if you want to speed up this process of social media, that's when you start introducing, write this down if you're not already taking notes. I know I made you laugh. And so half of you are like still dabbing tears out of your eyes. When you have those views, start calls to action, calls to action, calls to action. Yeah. So if you happen to watch me when I was doing that coaching live the other day, not only did I have, I mean, I didn't have this on my head, but not only did I have a unicorn, okay? <laughs> Wait, that looks like, okay? Not only did I... <laughs> Myself. Not only did I have a unicorn, but while that was happening, I was like, if you guys are laughing, make sure you hit follow. Okay. Make sure you hit follow right now on any platform. Okay. I'm live on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and YouTube. Hit follow, hit subscribe. Let's go. I'm funny and I'm smart. <laughs> Woo. And then I would say, hey, if you're new here, will you drop new in the comments? Just drop a new in the comments. Like I was, I was calls to actioning them left after you know, left and right and left and right and left and right because I knew I had their attention all of a sudden. Like if you want to speed up the process and it not take eight years or 10 years or however many years, take these little tiny, um, like we'll be Fraser for a minute, ninja tricks, right? And, and <laughs> get these people to interact with you right away. So then you can follow up after they've dropped new or after they've put, hey, drop ha ha in the comments if this is making you laugh. And you can follow up with every single person. Hey, what did you like? Did you like the lighter or did you like the shower cap? Or were you laughing really hard because of the, because of the face mask? What was funny? Like little ninja tips. By the way, tips. like little side note, um, your desk or workspace is officially the most random workspace in, on the, in, the, in, like, in the world right now. You have a face mask, a shower cap, and a lighter. Uh, like this is just, this is, this I is mean, interesting. I feel like I need to level up because more. I've got, I've got a mug and a pen. Uh, like, I, I, yeah, I need to up my game. That That's what, that's what I'm missing. So I've got it written down, but here for me, like I, obviously growing up in the industry, my dad would tell me what he did 15, 20 years ago. He couldn't show me. He has no documentation or proof of what he was doing. Whereas I can go, I can go onto, onto Facebook and I can go back like five, six, seven, eight years and I can go and watch Jesse Lee's lives. I can go back to mine and cringe because it was, hi folks, Fraser Brooks here coming to you from Liverpool. It, I can't even do it. It was so bad. It was so bad. But then you have the world's greatest training. Because your team are like, oh, well, I don't, I'm not very good at social media. I feel like I'm going to be really bad at it. Okay. I'm going to send you a link to a video that I did when I was you five years ago, three years ago, a year, 12 months ago, 18 months ago. They're going to watch it and go, really? No way. Because we, we all have that story. Go and watch Tony Robbins like 30 years ago. He's way better now. His voice is just better. It just sounds cool. And, he's like, la, 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 la. and his clapping's better. And even his jumping technique's better. Everything's just better because you just progress. And the progression creates the inspiration. People aren't inspired by people who are perfect. People are inspired by people who progress. And all we're doing on social media every single day is taking you on the journey that we're going on. That's all we're doing every single day, every single day. So here's, here's a tip for you. And uh, this is a, something that I want you to do in like a lunch break that we'll have in, in, in 30 minutes or so. But I want you to create like a dream 10. Now your dream 10 is imagine that you're playing football or in America it's throw ball, but you call it football. You're playing soccer, you're playing football, you're playing basketball, and it's you and 10 other people, right? So you and 10 other people. The 10 people I want you to put on the list are the 10 people who you're going to be following very closely on social media, so closely that you will be modeling their content. So you can follow me, you can follow Jesse Lee, you can follow Stormy Wellington, Emily Vavra, Stefania Legato, Evan Tapia, Eric Warwick. Follow the people and when they make a post, maybe you're going to do your own version. Because guys, we live in a day and age now where copying and modeling other people's content is totally acceptable. It's totally acceptable. And the creator of that content is going to get more views and more likes because it's called the original piece of content as well. So have that, that, that dream 10. Favorite those 10 people. So when you go onto Instagram, when you go onto Facebook, their posts are going to be at the top. 
But I like seeing my friend's cat videos. But I like seeing my best friend Sharon talk about her drama. If social media isn't inspiring you to create content, you will end up consuming content. And if you consume content, you'll be drained. Consuming is draining. Creating is energy. C consuming drains you, drains your energy. Creating lifts your energy up. <clears throat> so it's super, super important to do that. All right. Jesse Lee, I've got a question for you then. When it comes to hashtags, right? And let me know in the chat if you guys uh, have questions around hashtags, you thought about hashtags. Um, number one, do you use hashtags on both platforms or just Instagram? And then number two, do you put the hashtags in the caption or in the comments on your posts? Yeah, so I only <laughs> really pay attention to hashtags on Instagram. And, and I have read articles lately where Instagram is starting to just really not care at all about hashtags. So that's kind of interesting too. I like using uh, hashtags for something different though. So I'll tell you that in a second. But I do put them in the, uh, the comment section. And it's not about 30 hashtags anymore like it used to be. Um, that was another thing, an article that I read. And, and like, if you're wondering where I read articles and stuff from, they're just... Google is your best friend. <laughs> like you can find so much information on what the actual platforms are doing or under like the creators tab on, on, on actual Instagram. Instagram will tell you what they start to prioritize, things of that nature. Um, but really specific hashtags are going to work well, uh, but they just really aren't that important anymore on Instagram. I think I'm just kind of in the habit of doing them. I like hashtags though, for maybe like a different reason. I like hashtags to be able to actually gain um, like just find the right people, so to speak. So, um, you can go under your search tab. Like this is my explore page on Instagram. Um, so you can see, I basically like look for motivational quotes. I like makeup and, uh, I don't know, like, what is that? Women's business stuff. Okay. Shocker, shock, shock and awe. Okay. So in the search tab though, you can actually look up, you know, so like as an example, um, you know, maybe you're like, look, look up a uh, network, marketing this is just an example yeah network marketing eu <clears throat> okay so search and then it'll say so it'll have all of this now interestingly enough the number one on network marketing eu do you see who that is emily vavra that's interesting there's me right there i see oh, myself yeah. uh yeah so that's cool um so but then what i actually do is i'll go under tags up here at the top so it says top accounts, audio tags. And under tags, you can see network marketing EU, network marketing Europe, network marketing Europa, etc. I will click on that hashtag and then it'll bring up this page. Okay. I mean, you guys can all follow this and you can do it with your own stuff. It can be around, you know, your, it can be around network marketing. It can be around your business in general. It can be around, you know, your company name. It can be around a supplement you sell or a service you use or whatever. Um, but you can actually click. What I actually do is I don't look on top. I go to recent. And so then from here, these are the people that I'm going to interact with. Okay. Sorry about my lights. Um, these are the people I'm going to interact with. Right. So like these people, oh, that's awesome. Like these people, this guy came from Europe and is at, you know, David Imanita's uh, event right now. So I commented on that. Right. And then if you're somebody who's trying to find reels and sounds and you're a little bit lost on this, because um, maybe Stefania said, oh, you know, like the tick, tick, boom. I love that sound. And I knew what she meant because I speak TikTok fluently. <laughs> but some of you might have been like, what is she talking about? You can go under reels and you'll see the reels that people used with that. So it doesn't have to be network marketing EU. It could be just network marketing, right? And you can then click on that and then hear. God will make it happen in his perfect timing. And you go, oh, okay. That's a great sound. That works for me. Or you can literally scroll through. You're a woman who supports other women. Hey, girl, let's be friends. If you're That's obviously a sound that I'm like, ooh, I think I should save that. And that's trending under Network Marketing EU. So I don't necessarily think that the hashtags anymore under posts and stuff like that are nearly as important as they are. I actually use it for personal content creation. So for those of you, again, maybe not on the, like maybe you're not super, super creative. Um, that's a great way to gain some inspiration. How about you? No, you, I, I love it. And you, I, to be honest, I don't. I, yeah, I, I don't. I don't allow myself to spend more than a minute 
like I used to use apps and all these softwares and stuff. And I just found it a bit of a waste of time. I just thought, right, let's say there's a photo of me wearing a blue shirt. I'm going to put hashtag shirt, hashtag blue, hashtag happy, hashtag man. I'm just going to, whatever's in the photo, I'm going to hashtag unless I'm targeting, as you said, like hashtag network marketing Europa, hashtag network marketing Germany, hashtag network marketing London, whatever it might be. <clears throat> Don't overthink it. And because you get 30 hashtags, do you have to put 30 hashtags? No. Um, the content, the quality of the content and the engagement that you get is what's going to put it into the explore feed, like the main explore feed. So uh, just just be very be, be very mindful or be very 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 mindful of that. Um, I, I just really want to talk about I just want to talk about the. Like, oh, sorry, sorry. No, no, sorry. After you. Okay. Yeah. So with that, um, when it comes to really good. Um, like you were saying, really good content. There are things you can write in your captions though that are that are going to be useful. So if you're somebody mm -hmm. who maybe at the end of your reel something really funny happens, or at the end of your you know at the end of any post you know maybe something inspirational is at the end, or maybe there's like a special guest at the end, um, you put that in your caption because you'll get longer viewers on it, right? Um, and this goes back to calls to action as well, where you can say, hey, you can even put in your caption if this is useful, save this sound. You know, if, if you want to. You, know, you get the point. Um, but all of that is really powerful. Like my special, the special guest one I've done with my dogs numerous times. Like I'll be like, wait till the end, a special guest shows up and it'll be my dog like walk walks in because she smells food or something. Right. But people are like, oh my God, it was Wookie. Right. Or if it's something at the very end, that's hilarious. Like I said, you just, just tell them, Hey, wait till the end, wait till the end, wait till the end. And they, they will wait till the end. Um, but energy, 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 energy in reels. If you watch your reel and you go, see that I was kind of boring in that redo it, get up, move your body, move, put a little movement in your reel, that kind of stuff. People love that. <clears throat> so <clears throat> touching on what you mentioned then about the captions, um, of the post. So obviously I'm, I'm going to actually pull your, your, your bio, your, your Instagram up here now. Uh, let me see if I can get that onto the onto the screen wow. there we go uh there we go something like that i hope you guys can see that so let's say this third this third post is a photo of you by the way amazing uh i guess you hired someone for that um yes. like someone someone took this of you right it wasn't a timer there was like a photographer involved but look like talk talk to me about this caption because you and I are very similar with captions. I don't bother writing a caption unless I'm giving someone instruction. And I know you might, you guys might not be able to see the caption, um, but obviously you can go and find, you just go at, at, at I'm Boss Lee and you'll be able to see this post I'm talking about. How do you break your caption down? Do you have a framework? Do you have a plan with that? Because for me, I, I will either put at the top, tap love heart if you agree, then the agreement statement, mm -hmm. and then that's pretty much it. Or I'll write something and then I'll put tap love heart if you agree or comment below if you if you can relate. What's your what's your framework? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I took coaching from, oh, you lost, oh, my camera fell. That's why you lost my, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. You didn't know, but I, but I just saw the chat. I was like, oh, sorry. Okay, I'm back, I'm back. Um, so the, the first thing is I took Eric's coaching and he said, you know, hey, accelerators, you should, you should hire a photographer and do a photo shoot. And I went, oh, my God, I really should do a photo shoot. So I actually, as part of my 90-day run, have been doing a um, – I've been doing a photo shoot once a week. So I – and the interesting thing is, guys, please don't overthink this – um, because my selfies perform better than my professional content. <laughs> I don't know why, like not even yeah. selfies like this, like selfies where I, where it's on an iPhone and I propped it in a, in a door or something. Okay. Uh, but for me, I'm like, you know, I, I talk about my success pretty openly on social media. It's, you know, whatever. I should probably have some professional photos. So that is a professional photo, but let me talk, let me answer your question about the caption about the caption in general. What I have found is that if you are teaching and coaching for sure, people, not just inspiring, hear me on this, teaching and coaching, not just inspiring, you will get more engagement. So every single day I try to upload yeah. and you'll see, like if you click on any of my photos, really, um, I will 
I will post very specific directive on how to uh, do something. So I scrolled back a few <clears throat> posts from two days ago, how to launch your month, one, two, three, four, five tips. That post that you're currently on, on my feed where I'm sitting on, on my new car, um, this is about how, these are tips on how to remain consistent, right? And then, so I write, I purposefully write in kind of paragraph form, like you showed them, it's chunked out. I like writing like that because that's how my brain works as well. Okay. I'm just quite frankly, not going to sit there and read a giant chunk of text. I don't know about you guys. Let me know in the chat. Do you read chunks of text? I don't. Okay. I, I really, I just, I don't, um, I don't do that. So, but this, these little chunks, I'll read like a little chunk, like step one, step two, step three, step four, step five. The other thing is I know that yeah. people are following this where I'm telling them save the post, you know, and sometimes you can give them very specific directive where, and I'll just show you, um, cause I don't know how to do what Fraser did. He's like a little genius over there. Like I'll tell them, Hey, if it's useful, save by hitting the little flag on the right hand side. So like, I'm telling them to hit this little guy over here and then I'll say share by hitting the little arrow. And I'm telling them exactly how to share. Like you hit that little, I can't, I can't even use my finger properly. Good Lord. Whatever. You get the point. Okay. But I'm telling them in the caption how to do it. And then really calls to action. I've talked about this on Accelerator before, but calls to action aren't just, you know, drop info if you want to do business with me or put a yes if this, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I, I like to, I like to specifically give calls to action that don't make people have to think. So what I mean by that is the most commonly used emojis in the world are a smiley face, a laughing face, and a heart. Like if you guys were to, like, I'll test you right now. Go to your emojis, like go to send a text message. Okay. Could be dangerous. And hit your little globe thing or whatever, your smiley face thing. What are your most recently used emojis? Do you guys have a laughing face, a heart, and a smile? Does anybody? <laughs> Look, I see a laugh, heart, smiley face, smiley face. Oh, Aaron's got the, <laughs> I look, look at this. <laughs> you guys all do. So it, like nobody's saying no in the chat. Oh, shock. Oh, oh, Jesse Lee knows what she's talking about. Wow. Okay. So in a call to action in that one in particular, you said, I wrote, um, if this re it resonates with you today, let me know below with a heart. Right. So then people's call to action is not this long, thought out, whatever, you know, you could tell me, I'll drop a corn emoji below. Well, how many people, how many of you on here have a corn as your most recently yeah. used emoji, you know, like drop a pumpkin below. If this is sounding pumperific, well, I don't even think that's a word, but like, you know, nobody's going to have a pumpkin ready to go. You know, they're going to have, you know, one's going to, you know, no, they're going to have hearts. They're going to have smiles. They're going to have whatever. And so <laughs> I like to make my calls to action, easy stuff like, yes, like a heart. Yeah drop a smile. Um, if this reel made you laugh, drop a ha 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 ha, you know, like with the, the mm -hmm. emoji, um, all those things, but captions need to be written really intentionally. And, um, I like the coaching through it. And then I also like to make sure my captions have all color personalities in them as well. And, you know, it, it, it's also be mix it up with short, medium and long captions. Uh, this is maybe more more advanced stuff, but like you, there's again, there's a, there's another post out on Jessie Lee's where she's uh, standing outside. She has UGG boots on, I think, out, out, like in front of her car, and the caption is is a lot shorter. You will find that the shorter the caption, chances are the engagement's going to be going to be higher in terms of comments because people are scrolling, quick glimpse, comment. However, don't neglect the long form content because people who comment on that. They've probably read the whole thing. And if they've read the four, five, six paragraphs that you've written, they're gonna hey, they're they're gonna be hot. They're gonna be hot people who are who are like hot prospects for you. So Jesse Lake, you've made a post, right? You take a photo to sell, and we'll talk about this. Selfies, and, and I'll talk to you about what I do to make sure that my content is always improving. Selfies, photos of yourself, professional, like just ones you do yourself, whatever, like full body. Half body, headshot, like filtered, non-filtered. When you write the caption and someone drops the comment, drops the word, says you're awesome, says I love this, says if you want to change your life, you should go to at James Trader, da 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 dot com, whatever, right? You know these spammers on there. What, what, <laughs> what do you do? Do you? Because my my process is, I love heart the comment. 
I reply to it because obviously I, I believe a reply, it's better time spent replying to their comments than focusing on creating new content because I'm going to be de developing a depth of relationship. And then in the er earlier days, I was reaching out to those people. What do you do if someone comments on a piece of content right now? What do you, what's your next steps with those people? Cool. So I still do a lot of the stuff you just mentioned, actually. So um, to, to the variety of stuff on a feed, 100%. Like my posting is really intentional. Even Like before I post something, I'll glance at my feed first and go like, okay, what do I need? Right? So I posted this morning already uh, several quotes because it had been, when I'm looking at my feed, it had been too long since I posted something with text. OK, um, then yesterday, obviously, you, you know, I saw that, hey, I did something that's more of like a close up where I'm sitting on the car. And then I also had a full body where I'm wearing a very small dress in front of the Lamborghini with the snow falling in it. Right. Like, there's a full body in it. Um, the other kind of thing mm -hmm. that's intentional, if you look at what I do, is I always try to scroll through. Some of you are like you are so much perfectionists about everything. Um, I'm not <laughs> because I want people that are get ish dunners in my business more than I want people that are like, well, my cover photos all match. And I always have, I'm like, I don't even like, re like you, like you stop and make a cover photo for every reel. Like that is a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, but what I will do is when I'm selecting cover photos, when I finish a live or when I finish a reel is I will look for something that is, that is eye catching. So if you look on my feed, you'll see, um, the photo, uh, like in between the, I'll just show you, sorry, my camera's gonna take a minute to adjust because it's trying to focus on whatever. Like this one has that mask on in it. Okay. And then look at this one. Where is it? Hold on. Okay. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, yeah, Don. You see, you see the funny one with the lamb or the unicorn yeah. or whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had that mask on in that live video for less than 30 seconds. And I intentionally scrolled to find it because I knew people would look. And then when I could not believe that unicorn was caught because that <laughs> like me going like that must have been a split second. It's a miracle. Instagram got it. But I very intentionally grabbed that. But when somebody um, comments on my stuff, yes, I always do a love heart. I always comment back. OK, um, especially if it's in those first couple of hours, you know, because there's so many comments, What you know, you get you understand that um, occasionally. And this one's really big. And especially for those of you that are trying to just get into it, um, I sometimes and I need to even get better at this. So I'm glad I'm talking about this. Um, I will say the best three comments I will pin. So you'll start getting some thoughtful comments as well. And then you'll have people that are really, really reading what you're doing so you can pin those. Right. Those I find to be really valuable. And you're going to really start to find your raving fans, which are important for our businesses, obviously. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can pin the top three. I still do that where, like, quite frankly, if you want me to know who you are, your best bet is for you to comment on my stuff because I go to your page. And I will, com you'll, I mean, most of you on here have probably been at least love hearted by me, if not commented on by me. That's how I know who you are. If you've left a comment, I literally go to yeah. your page. I look at your stuff. I watch your stories. Then I go to the next one and the next one just to start engaging with people. And then if I really love somebody's profile, like if I'm like, God, you're like so funny or I'm obsessed with what your hair looks like, or you are so good at reels or I, I, like if, if I find one of you from doing what I just said, and I, I look at your page and I'm like, that person is a reels genius. I'm yes, I'm going to steal your stuff. So what I'm going to do though, before I steal it is I will DM you and be like, Fraser Brooks, bro, your, your reels are hilarious. I just want to let you know, I'm taking all of them, which is a, an actual conversation I have with Fraser. Right. Yeah, like I just let him is. know like your, good. your content's good. I've got no problem DMing you and telling you, Hey, I like what I see, but like, I'll never in a, you can never DM me and say, will you please check out my page? No. Cause I would have checked out your page if you engaged on mine. Like this is social media is very, very reciprocal. Um, and so that's, that's, that's what I do. And then it's cool because I'll give yeah. shout outs um, when I'm live all the time. Cause some of my lives are getting ready with me lives. Um, some of them are tea time where it's just kind of girl time and we're chatting and when I'm doing or question and answers. And when people come on, I'll literally be like, Oh my gosh, my girl, what is going on? Oh, you guys have got to see her post. It's so funny. Go to her page. Right? Like mm -hmm. social media is social. So no yeah. matter how busy you are, I guess this goes back to, I don't feel like I'm done building my business, but 
social media is social. And so I'm trying to socialize with people. I'm trying to find people where I'm like, yes, that is my freaking person, you know? And there are so many people that are, that are your people that you will find if you're actually engaging with them. So I appreciate that. Casey just says mm -hmm. you literally make everyone feel stupid. I'll start crying on this training. So you yeah. better shut your cute little mouth. <laughs> but, <laughs> but that, that's the thing, right? If you want to get a lot of love, you got to give a lot of love. I mean, a lot of people will ask, yeah, but I'm not getting anyone engaging in my posts. I'm not, remember, we've been at this for a long time. We've gone out there and commented on other people's posts before we got any comments on our own. Right, it's not just creating good quality content. It's us going to Attila's and Christina's and and uh, and Tony's and Carrie's and Casey's and Leanne's. You know, go into all these different people's posts who match what we're talking about. Like I'm talking about network marketing. I'm not going into football groups and going, "Hey everyone, what did you think of the score last night?" I'm not going into skiing groups and like, "Hey guys, do what kind of skis do you use?" Like, I'm not. I'm not talking about that. I'm communicating and giving love onto network marketing and network marketers posts. If you're talking about personal development, go and give love onto loads of people. Per go and give love to people who are talking about personal development. If you're talking about dog, this is why when you're posting about your dogs and then a post about football, then a post about fashion, then a post about food, and then a post about sports, and then a post about travel, then a post about personal development, then a post about Tony Robbins, and a post about Netflix, and a post... And then you go and engage on all these people's things. You have, you have 10,000 followers eventually. A thousand of them follow you because of sports. A thousand of them follow you because of Netflix. A thousand of them follow you because of network marketing. A thousand of them follow you for personal development. And then when you make a post about personal development, when you make a post about sports, there's a very small number of people who are actually seeing it because social media will pick up the behavior. So if people are commenting and engaging on, I mean, I'll show you this. This, I'm a little bit embarrassed about this. I'm, I'm embarrassed is the wrong word. But I'm going to ask you guys a question. I'm going to go into the explore feed of my uh, on my phone, right? Which is this little this little uh, magnif this little magnifying glass here. I want you to write in the comments what you think I've been watching and engaging on, just by the content that you see in my explore feed. Is there any any sort of put? There we go. Golf, golf, golf. A golfer. Is that tennis? Tennis. Golf, golf, golf. Go it knows exactly what I'm engaging on. It knows exactly. Are you I mean, so I'm golf? I'm doing bad here really? because I'm not really? posting about golf at all, right? So here's the thing: what you engage on, you're gonna get back. So you have to, if you can match the content that you're creating, if you can match the content you're creating with what you're actually engaging on, it's going to match up and your engagement is going to, is, it's just going to grow as a result. Um, so here's, here's another little framework for you to use. I use this, I've used this since 2013 and it's helped me grow my engagement and grow my engagement. It's called the CPR method, CPR CPR, CPR, CPR. It's how you kind of resuscitate your your uh, your your social media game, bring it back to life. The C stands for comment. So five minutes before you're going to make a post, just comment on other people's posts. If you're going to make a post about the Lamborghini, if you're going to make a post about your network marketing business, if you're going to make a post about health and wellness, if you're going to make a post about personal development, go onto Instagram or onto Facebook groups and comment on people's posts that are to do with what you're about to post. Do that for five minutes. That's you warming up the algorithm, letting them know, I'm about to post something, something big's coming. Then you spend five minutes doing the post. This is the P. So you comment for five minutes, then you do the P, which is you're going to post for five minutes, right? That's you taking the photo, that's you writing a caption, like it might take you less than five minutes. It might take you a little bit more. If it takes you more than five minutes, you're overthinking it and you're trying to be perfect. Don't do it. As Jesse Lee always says, messy action, messy action, messy action. Then the R is for reply. The R is for reply. So then you're going to spend five minutes replying on comments that you're getting, or if you're not getting any yet, the comments that you've had on previous posts. If you follow this, you'll be able to cover enough. You warm the algorithm up, you post it, and then you re reply to the people's comments that you get. In time, it might be five minutes commenting, five minutes posting, and 10 minutes replying, maybe 15 minutes replying. You won't have to do any more than 15 minutes. 
um, because that means you're going to just get a ridiculous number of, um, of comments. You do this on Facebook. You do this on Instagram. You can do this on TikTok. Go and give love, create the content, and communicate with the people who are going to, uh, who are going to respond. Jesse Lee, you get, and you, do you follow that, that framework as well, Jesse Lee? Yeah, and it always works on every platform. It's kind of the cool thing. So, like, before I even upload, you know, I know we're not doing, like, talking a ton about TikTok, but, like, even before I do it on TikTok, I'm always – I always respond back to all my stuff, and then I do the exact same mm -hmm. thing. The other thing you can do is – I thought you were going to say this, actually. Um, you can look at mm -hmm. other content that has performed really well that is similar to what you're about to post. So if you're going to post a photo of a Lamborghini – um, as an example, I thought you were going to say, go look at other people's examples of what they've talked about or posted about or how they're posed or whatever um, with theirs. But content that performs well is content that performs well. And so back to your entire conversation, you've mentioned a few times of like some of you are overthinking social media because you think you have to be super, super creative. You don't. This is a sharing society now. It just is. Um, and so for sure that works. And then something that was asked in the chat that I just want to go over really fast, because I think a lot of you are overthinking this a lot. And I've, I just did a whole training on this too, which so it, I know how relevant it is to right now in 2022, if you're watching this live, uh, somebody was saying, you know, should I post my product? Should I be, you know, more out about it? And this is something Fraser and I are so aligned on at this point in time, which is, you know, we used to do this thing where, so I don't sell this by the way, you know, and we're not pitching anything today, Fraser or, or myself, but, but this, so this is, I'll just use this as an example. I don't know who on here is a Lime Life rep. I mean, I guess there's some of you. Okay. I have all network marketing products. I, all, all I do is network marketing products. Okay. So like, this is a Lime Life <laughs> buy cone. And what you guys used to do when you would post is we would do um, what we would call attraction marketing with this idea of if we make them hunt for it, then they're going to have to DM us. And I think, you know, I mean, it, it certainly worked a bit. I'm, I used to do it. Um, but this is what you would do. You would literally like, I, have, I mean, I have the whole set. I bought the whole flipping set, actually. So I've got like multiple, I've got all your, whatever. There's so much stuff. Okay, just take two for now. You would take the brushes and you would like cover them up. Or I swear you would be doing your makeup like this, like, yeah, if you want my amazing brushes, just, you know, um, comment brush below and I'll DM you, right? Like we used to do this or, you know, we would take a photo where you, you would, you would just cover the whole thing up or whatever. No, you know, I'm, I'm so open about what I do at this point in time. Are people going to Google it? Yes. Are people going to think that you are in a pyramid like Yvonne said? Yup. Are people going to think that you are a scam artist? Yup. Are people going to hate you? <laughs> yup. Uh, you know what else though? Are people going to love you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are people out there looking for really good makeup brushes? Yeah. You know what's funny? I found a second right next to me. Another. <laughs> this is a different one. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Like, this is actually a Monet one, right? Now, I don't sell this either. But, like, look, you know, somebody sent this to me. This is great. So I have two shower caps. Um, but anyway, like, I wouldn't be hiding, you know, that I use Monet products. Or I wouldn't be hiding, you know, Bellamy makeup. I wouldn't be hiding this stuff because you're going to find enough people who love what you do. <laughs> the chat. Jessie Lee and her shower caps. I might make that part of my brand. You better watch out. All right. But, um, you know, like. I don't think people want to go on a hunt anymore in 2022. It's why yeah. I talk so much about link in the bio, you know, uh, it's why so much I'm like, just mm -hmm. take the hunt out of it and show people what you do. Tell people what you're about. They're going to like you or they're not, but I would much rather people know what I do, see my product and go, Oh my gosh, I love that. She sells that. I'm going to message her directly instead of going to Amazon or eBay or, um, Poshmark or wherever the hell people marketplace. Mm -hmm. I don't even know. Um, I would much rather somebody creates a relationship with me, knows what I sell, knows what I do, knows who I am. Um, and doesn't feel like they have to go on a wild goose hunt to find, Hey, like I liked, I liked her contour, you know, what, what was it she was yeah. using? I don't sell this either, you know? Um, but what, some of you want here and sell it for sure, you know? Yeah. And, and it's not every post. It's not every other post where it's like product, 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 product. It's not every other host, but it's enough that if someone binges or goes through a bunch of your content, they'll at least be able to know. I think 
my opinion of it changed since COVID, really. Maybe a little bit before when social media got noisier. Like, it got noisier, it got busier, it got louder, more people are on there. And one of my biggest fears when I, when I was obviously building uh, in the field was that I would be at an event and they would announce the newest, the newest top income earner. And they would walk across the stage as the top income earner. And I go, huh? I, I know that guy. Like, I, she, ha. and I knew them. They followed me. They messaged me. They added me. They liked it. And I never spoke to them about the business or the opportunity or the, or the product or the service. And because they saw someone else talking about the thing, they, they were associated with me. They were tagged in a photo. They commented on a post. And because it was very obvious what that person was doing, they joined under that person. And I felt I would have felt I would have felt, felt I would have felt like I would have missed out on that person. So don't be afraid to share it. Uh, I like I like it when people share what they're doing, their company, their products in video based content, video stories, lives, reels, um, not as much like selfies and stuff. Obviously, different opinions and different different ways to go about that. But uh, I think it's a good time for us to have our our break. Um, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do a 20 minute break. So let's, let's be back here at, I'm trying to think Pacific time. I think that's 12 35 PM Pacific time. It's 15 minutes past midnight here, by the way, guys. Uh, so I, I think you guys are 50, uh, 12 hours behind me. So yeah, 30, like 12 35 PM Pacific time. Uh, we'll get back. And I want to, I want to start by sharing with you a really cool stories, live post strategy. We'll talk more about lives. We'll talk more about stories. We'll talk more about the messenger. Uh, lots of fun stuff coming as well. So, yeah, we'll see you back in, in 20 minutes. <laughs> 